I've been meaning for a while to do a video on fluoridation and aspartame. And let me just state right up front that this is my personal, not my professional opinion. I can't give my professional opinion on fluoridation because, number one, I have a slight conflict of interest in that I receive money from agencies which support fluoridation. And number two, I haven't spent the hundreds of hours looking through the actual data in all the studies on fluoridation. Unfortunately, there are thousands of professionals out there who are giving their opinions in a professional capacity on fluoridation, and they have never personally looked at the studies, and they also almost always have a conflict of interest in that they are employed by or members of organizations which support fluoridation. So just keep that in mind. Almost every time you hear a professional giving an opinion supporting fluoridation, they've never really looked over the data themselves. There's a growing body of evidence that fluoridation causes osteoporosis and certain types of bone cancer, but I could be here for 10 years doing videos on various unnatural substances that cause different health problems. The reason I'm doing a video on fluoridation and aspartame is that there's a growing body of evidence that these are neurotoxins and you'll see from my other videos that I have a particular emphasis on exposing any potential neurotoxins. There are studies coming out of China now which indicate that fluoride decreases IQ in children and there are studies which were repressed for years in the United States which are finally being forced to light which show that animal studies uh, indicate fluoride has a neurotoxic effect. A good book on the subject is The Fluoride Deception by Christopher Bryson, and you can also see an excellent interview with Mr. Bryson on YouTube. Um, what concerns me personally the most about fluoride is that it deposits in the pineal gland more than any other location in the body, and I'm very hesitant about anything that unnaturally deposits in the brain, and particularly in the pineal gland. Luckily, it's fairly easy to reduce fluoride intake. You simply drink non-municipal water. It's not to say that there aren't a lot of wonderful advantages of municipal water, it's just probably not optimal for drinking. Um, in addition to fluoride, it usually has chlorine and chlorine byproducts like trihalomethanes, and it also doesn't have the best uh, mineral balance usually. It tends to be high in aluminum because of the alum used in flocculating uh, sediment. But spring water is probably the healthiest. It has uh, the best mineral balance and um, it doesn't have any fluoride. If you're really concerned about dental caries, then dissolved calcium in your drinking water is probably one of the best things you can do and spring water often is high in, in dissolved calcium. And it's also fairly easy to have spring water delivered in most municipal areas. Uh, it costs less than a dollar a day. I would recommend getting the large five-gallon jugs because they're more cost-effective and also they have less plastic in contact with the water and they use a harder type of plastic which tends not to leach into the water as much as the small water containers that you buy from the store. While I'm on the subject of drinking water, I'll talk about other drinking water treatment methods. Um, steam distillation, when you buy the distilled water at the store, that doesn't really have any minerals in it. True, it doesn't have fluoride, but it's going to leach minerals out of your body, and most Americans are mineral deficient anyway without having to have even more minerals leached out of their body by drinking distilled water. Likewise, reverse osmosis that you may have in your home. If it does remove fluoride, it's also going to remove all of the other minerals in your water and again, then you'll be removing an important source of, of minerals in your diet. You see, minerals in solution in, in water are much more readily absorbed and uh, drinking water, if, especially spring water, is a great source of minerals in your diet. And lastly, there's activated carbon, which isn't really effective in removing fluoride. The next wide-ranging neurotoxin unique to the American diet is aspartame or NutraSweet. And the story of how aspartame was ever approved by the FDA is really kind of a soap opera of corporate subterfuge. There was always evidence from the beginning showing that aspartame was a neurotoxin, and the FDA held up approval for years. And believe it or not, Monsanto's parent company, Cyril, was the one that was finally able to get approval of aspartame when Donald Rumsfeld became the CEO and was able to use his political influence to obtain approval and circumvent the normal FDA process. Aspartame was actually developed as a drug and it simply had the side effect of a sweet taste. And it's really amazing that a drug is such a widespread component of our food now. Beyond the direct neurotoxic effects of aspartame, it also causes a wide range of health problems and before the FDA stopped keeping track, supposedly aspartame was responsible for over half of all health-related complaints to the FDA. But again, I bring it up mostly for the neurotoxic effects 
You see, once you remove neurotoxins like fluoride and aspartame and some of the other substances that I mentioned in my other videos, then you have a baseline for nervous system health. And until you have kind of a baseline healthy nervous system, it's really difficult to function and think clearly.